Hello everybody, my name is Mike Petralia, joined as always by Patriots expert columnist for WPEI.com, Christopher Price. We are at the Sheridan Wild Horse Resort in Chandler, Arizona, about 15 miles south of Glendale, where Super Bowl 49 will be played on Sunday afternoon, but the Patriots waste no time upon their arrival here in Arizona on Monday afternoon making news. Robert Kraft, the owner, comes out swinging against his critics, and more specifically, Chris, the critics of Tom Brady and Bill Belichick in Flakegate, those who say that those two gentlemen have something to hide. Robert Kraft made two decisions. First of all, on Monday afternoon, he said in his 15 years working with them, he has never known either of them to lie to him. And secondly, if it's uh, turned out, it turns out that the Wells investigation turns up nothing that incriminates the Patriots. He wants an apology from the National Football League. What did you make of everything? Uh, I thought, first of all, those were the strongest comments that I've heard Robert Kraft make in his 20 years, 20 plus years now, as the owner of the New England Patriots. For, for what it's worth, this is not a man given to over pronouncements over the course, or maybe over the second half of the course of his career as uh, the, the owner of this franchise. I think the other thing was. He basically came out and was a character reference uh, you know, for, for both Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. Very strong statements. And the fact that he doubled down on the league and said, look, not only is this not true, but I would expect it, when it is proven to be not true, I would expect an apology. I would expect the league to have to apologize to us as a franchise. Those are very strong words from a guy who's not usually given to such language. You know what I thought, Chris? I thought this was Robert Kraft's way of saying, we are all patriots. We are staying unified. Bill Belichick spoke after Robert Kraft and then Tom Brady. All three of them spoke of the unity that this team has shown all season long. It's a theme that I think Robert Kraft touches on, and obviously Bill Belichick and Tom Brady have followed up on it. Yeah, and I, I think whether or not you believe them, I think the strong statements from Brady, the strong statements from Belichick, and especially the strong statements today from Robert Kraft would lead you to believe that the league doesn't have anything on him at this point. I, I can't imagine right. the, the team, not just the team, the owner, the coach, the quarterback would have to backtrack on these comments in some form or fashion. They put themselves out there, again, with some very strong comments, some very strong language. You have to believe that they think, at least for the, on their part, that there's nothing to these accusations. Now, Robert Kraft, in that statement of about four minutes that he made here uh, at the Sheridan Wild Horse uh, in Chandler, uh, said that he prepared those statements in the air. While he was preparing those statements, Jay Glazer of Fox Sports came out with a report that the NFL is focusing their study on a, an equipment manager inside uh, the Patriots locker room that supposedly may have been with the balls after uh, the officials had them uh, for the AFC Championship, and that is one of the areas of investigation. Really, we don't know what that means because we don't haven't seen the video, supposedly in Glazer's uh, report, there's a video um, coming forward. We'll wait and see, but what did you make of that report? The rogue ball boy theory, where, where, there, where there was one member of the organization who decided to take it upon himself to go and manipulate these footballs and pre-treat these footballs in whatever form or fashion. We haven't seen the we haven't seen the full details of it yet. We haven't seen the video. I think right now that's a little bit tenuous, at least as far as I'm concerned. Again, the people were making jokes very early on in this process that there was a rogue ball boy involved, and if it does come to pass, well, you know, we're all going to have to pay for it in some form or fashion. But I think as it stands right now, again, I don't know how believable that theory is. I'd like to see some more evidence. I'd like to see a little bit more backstory there before I start thinking about it. And about it, not, uh, you know, I, I don't think by accident there was a, a release by uh, the NFL about an hour later that Ted Wells expects this investigation to go on, quote unquote, several weeks uh, beyond the Super Bowl. So we'll see how that turns out. Some other interesting takeaways from Tom Brady, uh, Chris, this afternoon that really stuck out? Yeah, I think that there were a couple of things. I, I think first and foremost, when you're looking at this team, I, I, the comment that you made before, I think really strikes me. Both Brady, as well as the guys in the other room over there, they spoke about unity, they spoke right. about character, they spoke about the fact that they are together as a group going forward. It's going to be fascinating to see how these guys react over the course of the next few days, particularly tomorrow with Media Day. Media Day, as we always know, is a bit of a circus and can <laughs> kind, of, kind, of, kind of throw even the most steady and even-handed guy. Um, but the way that they're starting to hold up right now, it doesn't appear to be that much of a distraction. I want to go back to 2007, 2008 really, February 2008. You knew that that team, at least in retrospect, coming into this game here, a perfect season on the line, that week of practice was pretty bad. 
going in, and now that we understand, we've heard the stories in retrospect, a good week of practice sets the tone for the game. Postseason, regular season, preseason, whatever the case may be. I want to be able to talk to these guys Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, seeing how the week of practice is going. If they're scattered, if they're unfocused, then there's a, the, the chance that there's real trouble ahead. If they are focused, if they're doing what they need to be doing, if they're taking care of business, I'm going to be fascinated to see how all of that plays out. All right, Bill Belichick also uh, began his opening statement here uh, in uh, Chandler, Arizona, talking about the storm and being so fortunate to get out before the big winter storm, the blizzard, hit New England. And he thanked the Patriot fans. I thought it was a nice touch by yeah. Bill to say, you know, I'm sure the Patriots fans, our fans, have always shown toughness. They'll show toughness and smarts to get through another storm. We will try to keep you warm here in the desert in Arizona with coverage on WEI.com. Myself, Christopher Price, and Ryan Hannibal uh, and Jerry Thornton on site uh, to provide you day-to-day -day coverage, in-depth coverage on WEI.com as the Patriots compete against the Seattle Seahawks in Super Bowl 49. As Chris mentioned, there is media day Tuesday at U.S. Airways Center uh, here in Phoenix uh, before they really get into the regular uh, proceedings of practice uh, starting on Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then, of course, Saturday's walkthrough in the Super Bowl on Sunday. We'll have it all covered here on WEEI.com. Stay warm and safe back in New England. Christopher Price, I'm Mike Petralia with the Patriots in Chandler, Arizona, WEEI.com.